Welcome back, everybody. Derek Sue, your East Oakland advocate. Well, it is Pride Month, and all of us have probably had somebody close to us in our immediate family that may have been gay, a lesbian, uh, or non-binary even. Um, I certainly have, uh, and uh, the time that I grew up was a very different time. It was the transition time. Uh, I remember uh, the uh, murder and execution of Mayor George Mostoni and Harvey Milk back in 1978. I was absolutely shocked um, when that happened because uh, it came across the news uh, that morning um, and Diane Feinstein made that announcement. Uh, Oh, it, it, it was very shocking, and, and it wasn't like we didn't know uh, uh, we had folks that were uh, gay, because the term hadn't even been, in, been coined yet uh, uh, when in my time, and uh, there were, they were called a lot of different things, and uh, one of the, the things that my dad called them were, were, was fruits, uh, and I found that offensive because yeah, I didn't see any connection with that, but that was my dad's way of, uh, his nice way of, of addressing uh, gay, lesbian, and alternative lifestyles. Uh, I went to school with uh, uh, folks like this uh, as students. Uh, I made fun of them, yes. I was like uh, most of the kids back then, we made fun of uh, the, the really weird different kids uh, we'll call them uh, but I grew out of that because uh, one of the things that that uh, really uh, came to light for me was that I had an immediate uncle who was gay and I didn't uh, find that out until very much later in life after well past uh, uh, high school and, and uh, well into my career uh, and, and uh, my parents, uh, we had growing up in, when we moved into the neighborhood uh, on Buena Ventura Avenue, uh, a couple across the street, uh, they were retiring. They had uh, uh, the husband's uh, dad living in an apartment below their home underneath. It was a two story home and they made it into uh, uh, in law unit down below and rented that out. So anyway, uh, when they moved out, they sold the the uh, property and uh, a gay couple moved in, Michael and Barry. Uh, they were a young couple uh, in their, uh, probably, I think in in the, the late 70s there when, when Barry and Michael moved in, they were probably mid-20s uh, as a couple. And they stayed together uh, as a couple. And, and even up until 2012, uh, that was uh, when I moved out of my parents' home uh, because of the eviction from the court. Uh, and, and I knew uh, Michael and Barry all those years. And, and you know, I watched them age uh, as a gay couple. And, and they, they did very well as uh, a couple and in their careers. So... I had no issues with that. And then again, like I said, I had a very close connection because my uncle Bob, uh, my mother's older brother, was gay. He's uh, in the picture uh, in the center. Uh, uncle Bob, his, that was Robert Lou. And, and uh, how I found out that he was gay uh, was uh, through going, after he had passed away, um, uh, there were a lot of uh, things that indicated and showed uh, his lifestyle. Um, and he was, Uncle Bob was one of those uh, weird uh, personalities, characters that the family just didn't talk about. Uh, number one, he went into the army, but then he was uh, um, uh, discharged from, from the army for medical reasons rather than uh, him being gay, uh, or because back then, if you were gay and in the military, you were, that was a, an automatic 4F. Uh, but my Uncle Bob, he had flat feet, so he couldn't run, 
he had bad eyes, so he couldn't shoot. And so uh, there was no, no uh, place for a soldier who couldn't get past boot camp. And uh, Uncle Bob, uh, he couldn't get past boot camp, but his significant other, his partner, uh, ended up being a life partner. And I believe that's where they met because there were, there's been pictures throughout the decades uh, with the two of them. So obviously, Uncle Bob, while he never left home, so to speak, he never uh, rented an apartment of his own or had a place of his own. He always lived at home. So uh, the family referred to him as a mama's boy. Uh, and because he never left home, he never had a girlfriend. He never showed any uh, interest in a partner, a lifelong partner. And uh, in the time that I grew up in, uh, being gay, uh, or uh, lesbians were, were a little more tolerated, but gay men, not so much. Uh, during uh, my time on, on walking the earth, uh, it was very, it was pretty much a death sentence um, at that time, uh, uh, 40s. Uh, you couldn't be in the military because of being in close quarters with other men, uh, and they didn't they had an anti-fraternization uh, regulation on all of the servicemen. And so, there, and we know that things go on anyway. But anyway, my Uncle Bob, uh, during the time that he was uh, still alive, and I was uh, overseeing his final days uh, there at the home, one of the events that happened that really uh, got me concerned because uh during one of my visits to uncle bob checking up on him making sure he was okay that he had food he had water he he had his medications everything was all right and that he was still alive <clears throat> i happened uh to know that uh uncle bob had a certain amount of money in in his bank and, and uh i went and, and got the uh, valuable or the necessary uh, uh papers. Actually, Uncle Bob had got, gone down there uh, the month before because I mentioned to him that any important papers cannot be in that safe deposit box because he was already, he knew he was dying and he let me know about the safe deposit box and what was in there. And, and uh, having gone through uh, everything with my mother's estate uh, previously and um, knowing and also having uh, a family uh, attorney, uh, my attorney for me to advise me on, on everything. Um, <clears throat> I told Uncle Bob, those papers and, and all of those things I need, they cannot be in, in the safe deposit box because upon one's death, those, all your bank accounts, all your safe deposit boxes, everything, your assets are frozen. And so if you have insurance policies in there that you, you can't access you cannot access those for 45 days that's the law there's nothing you can do about it there's nothing the bank can help you with in that situation that's the law and so anyway uncle bob got me all those in, uh, important uh, documents and, and papers I, so i i knew what i was up against and then a strange occurrence happened um, on the, the day prior to his death, I knew that Uncle Bob was so weak. Uh, and he was telling me what the balance was at, at Bank of America. I said, okay, that's fine. That's fine. I don't, uh, I don't need to have that proof or anything. So you know, I'll worry about that later. And, and we talked about his final arrangements and, 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 the, you know, he had a, uh, mausoleum at um, Mountain View Cemetery right next to Grandma and Grand Grandpa, which are his parents. And so he bought a, a mausoleum right next to them when uh, he purchased uh, the mausoleums for my grandfather in 1974 with his passing. He bought one for my grandmother right next to him and then his right next to my grandmother. Uh, and so it was three across. Uh, and so uh, I had that paperwork in hand, and I needed that so that I could 
uh, move forward on uh, his arrangements. So everything all said and done. But that evening uh, on my visit, I noticed because Uncle Bob was very weak. Uh, and I noticed in, in his office, right off of adjacent to the bed, his bedroom on his desk was a bank statement from the ATM at his bank several blocks away. And that got me wondering, okay, now how did he get that? Because he was so weak, he barely makes it to the, to the bathroom across the hallway. And walking nearly four blocks to his bank, that was an impossibility for him. No, there was no way that was going to happen. And because, number one, he had to get down the, the flight of... Uh, two flights of stairs from the, from the upstairs level to uh, the main level of the home. And then from the main level of the home, there was an additional 15 steps down to ground level. So, and he couldn't, there's no way that he was going to be, he might have been able to get down, but it, it literally would have killed him because he would have rolled down there. And there was no way that he was going to have the strength to get up that number of stairs to his bedroom to return there and to even get that receipt onto the desk for me to see the balance on the bank account. So I'm sure what that was um, because I also asked the other person that I knew that had a key and she said no. She had not been in the home. In fact, she had uh, been ridiculing me for the way that I was handling uh, Uncle Bob, but I was uh, honoring Uncle Bob's request to die in the home. That was his request. He did not want to die in the hospital, and also the hospital could not do anything for him, and so they wouldn't take him in unless he was unconscious uh, and had a serious and could. It was medically um, an issue and he couldn't speak for himself. That was the only way that I could get him in there because he could refuse the uh, admittance into uh, the hospital. But anyway, back to Pride Month. Uh, I've, I've come across a lot of uh, uh, friends and made a lot of friends with uh, gay, lesbian, uh, queer, trans, uh, and non-binary people. In fact, in, in my line of work where I have been an Oakland advocate helping people off the streets, there have been many uh, alternative lifestyle couples that I've helped to get into housing. Uh, and um, that's their choice. Now, I don't judge. I don't judge folks. Uh, I stop judging because, like I said, I've had uncles and I've also found aunts and cousins that were gay and, and nothing changed uh, between their friendship, my relationship with them and, and myself remains the same. Uh, and, and I don't judge them. Uh, and, and we're told not to judge po folks, but yet that goes on in this world. And, and that's part of the discrimination that, that happens. And, and if you're able to discrimination, be discriminate on something that could be a family member and then transpose uh, that into the public realm is very detrimental. And, and so you have to be accepting. If you're accepting of your family members that may be of the alternative lifestyle uh, that they choose for themselves to live out their best life, uh, I wish them well. I don't uh, wish them any harm. I don't want to harm them. Uh, if they're not harming me, I'm not going to harm them. Uh, it's not my place to judge their lifestyle, and it's not their place to judge my lifestyle. And so uh, that's how I, I view things. Uh, and, but I do support uh, the folks that uh, have chosen you know, that type of life uh, as long as they're not trying to in, uh, involve me in there because I, I know there was one experience very long time ago um, 
this uh, older gentleman uh, was really pushing, you know, like he wanted a date and, and, and sexual favors. And I, I wasn't that way. And, and this was when I lived in Alameda. And this was a very dignified looking uh, older gentleman. He had money, he had a, a nice home in, in Harbor Bay, but it was shocking because he was so aggressive with his type of lifestyle that uh, I just flat out told him, no, I'm not interested. I don't do that. I have a wife and child. And, and he made some very rude comments after that. But ever since then, uh, as long as you're not pushing a, a, your lifestyle on me, I'm not going to have to forcibly do something to maybe defend myself and that's where it how far it got with this uh, older gentleman where I, I physically threatened uh, to harm him and, and I actually did give him a sampling of uh, the pain that I was going to instill uh, and, and so that's what broke it off there uh, but uh, that was the only incident that that uh, was a very negative for me in, in alternative lifestyles, but, but it was also an eye opener for me uh, to uh, to that and, and see that there are even in um, alternative lifestyles there are bullies like that uh, in uh, that use their sexual uh, 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 prowess to make victims of other people. But anyway. I do support uh, alternative lifestyles as I do a heterosexual lifestyle. Uh, I am heterosexual myself. I've never participated nor been uh, in an alternative lifestyle uh, situation and never will be. Uh, but one of the things that I, I can say, uh, I did see uh, through uh, my uncle the sadness of his life. Uh, he literally had had a, a, a very pitiful life. He, uh, he had a gambling habit. He always uh, lived at home. Uh, he became the man of the house after my grandfather passed away in 1974. And he was uh, the live-in caretaker of my grandmother uh, all during her cancer uh, and uh, her final days. And so... Um, Uncle Bob, I'm sure, uh, leaned on his friend. I don't even know his friend's name, which uh, if I was able to have been, if I had been able to talk to Uncle Bob about his lifestyle, I probably would have found out a lot more. And, and uh, you know, it probably would have made sense his entire life because uh, he was always sad. There, there was rarely ever a smile on his face. He worked as an accountant his entire life, and when he, he passed away, he passed away with only $900 in his bank account, just enough uh, to, for me and a little bit extra money uh, to take care of his, all of his final internment uh, and also a mem small memorial service uh, for him. Uh, he didn't have a whole lot of uh, friends that uh, I could fine. Uh, in fact, uh, the service was mostly just all immediate family, and that was it. Uh, there were a couple of neighbors that, that also uh, appeared, but his life was very sad and very lonely, and, and that's what I see on a lot of uh, the folks who aren't able to come out, and, and that was uh, part of his time, you know, because uh, being gay uh, or alternative lifestyle uh, back then could have uh, been a whole lot worse than what it was because uh, in many times uh, we saw uh, gay, lesbian people. And then also being Asian descent, it put him in danger of being beat up and murdered you know, by uh, society. So there was a lot of reasons why he stayed silent uh, and uh, unfortunately, he didn't live a best life. He, he lived a very sad and lonely life. And, and that's what I see with a lot of uh, the uh, 
uh, folks that I come across that are homeless and live an alternative lifestyle because they were thrown out of their home because of their lifestyle choice, their their parents that uh, loved them all of a sudden unloved them because they were suddenly gay, lesbian, binary, or um, trans, queer, drag queen, whatever. Uh, and and so their parents rejected them, and, and sadly we see a lot of that. And then uh, there's a lot of those types of people that uh, do violence to them on the street. And, and all of the folks that that came through my camp that were uh, gay, trans, or uh, les lesbian, any of those lifestyles, I just let them know. I don't care what you are. As long as you're not causing trouble here and you're not uh, bringing trouble into the camp, you're welcome. But if you bring trouble into this camp, then you know that's when you and I will have some words. Thank you for joining me today. This is Gay Pride, uh, Pride Month, and so uh, I do support uh, Pride Month and uh, the the folks of that lifestyle. So thank you for joining me today. We'll be right back.